Hello everyone, this is Chris Brooks from Rivstix Game Studio, and this is Catacomb Crashers, the developer edition. Catacomb Crashers can be interacted with directly through a developer. They can code monsters for it um, and inject them into the system and watch them play out and run battles. So let's, let's see what's up with that. So right here we have in the corner, we have a player settings. This is where the DLLs will be loaded for players. So you'll be able to find players, uh, DLLs as they win tournaments and such will be posted online. You'll be able to load them into your game and, and play against them if you choose. Uh, there's also a player component that comes with this game where you'll get to play, make your actions as well as uh, the developers going against the developers DLLs. So anyway, there's your location. You can change that location at will and save it. You can also make and create your own maps. So let's go ahead and load this map in. So this will be the map that I'll first start with. And then there's also some features. We have spawn points, which is where the monsters are going to spawn at. We have stone walls, which will block monster movement. And we have spike traps, which damages monsters. And then we also can change certain parameters of the, uh, of the map as we go. So right now, as you see in our players, we have Dino, who's a rat, his name's Rex. He's a dino. He's using the dino monster. Frankie's using Frank. Louie uses an angler. Ralph uses a cyclops. And Franny uses a cat. And Larry uses a demon. Now I can change these before I run the simulation anytime I want. And so you, that may be their preferred monster, but it doesn't necessarily always be their monster. The X here is that they're going to be active in the game. Um, if you check it off that means they won't appear in the game so let's go ahead we have a map loaded let's go ahead and load our map so I come down here and I hit run and you'll see the monsters load in so here they are they're loading in I don't have sound at this point there's no sound manager installed right now so they're going around they're pushing against each other they're trying to work each other off the platform um, they fall to their death. They respawn. Um, this happens sometimes due to uh, something in uh, having to do with the uh, the threading that I'm still looking into, but it'll it'll be handled in the uh, actual release of the system. So it's just a Unity type of co-routine where it kind of like lags like that once in a great while. So I'm working on that as I go. But as you see, they can they manage themselves. They all have their own patterns that they're following. Now you notice with leaping uh, this demon here, his name's Larry. We're going to be changing him the way he acts. So he's right here. This is Larry. He, um, right now he just moves whenever he can and he leaps whenever he can. Even if that means he leaps off into outer space. So we'll smarten him up in a little bit and see. Uh, you'll see how. A developer can make those changes. You also have three different camera views. You have uh, four different. You have the angled view. You have the top-down view. If you have a uh, monster selected, who just died right now, let's select. Uh, let's select Ralph, I guess. If you have a monster selected, you can then go into third-person view. And I'll even go into first person view. <laughs> so you can see him kind of moving around. There's four different views. So I like to keep it in angle just so I can see the whole everything happening. But anyway, they're going through. They're going to fight, play out their game. There they go. All right, so that is how essentially the game runs. As a as a developer player, you get every turn, you're presented with the map, you're presented with where your monster is in relation to it, what actions you're allowed to take for that particular turn. Um, you're given the, uh, the whole interface is given to you, which I'll explain. Um, but as... Uh, 
as you go into uh, you, different maps or whatever, one monster might work well for one map, but might be horrible for another map. So you never know how that goes. Um, how we want this to apply on that is that every turn they get to go. And, um, but as a player, you have to pick six turns. So you have to pick six actions, and then your monster comes and plays out those six actions. In multiplayer mode, multiple players will be picking their actions and will play out against the uh, regular AI controlled players, or I should say human controlled uh, developers. So as you can see here, we have Ralph has won the game. He's all happy um, and he has won. So, all right, so let's go ahead and close the end the run. We'll go back in the map settings. There are three different types of maps right now. So you may present a, a PVP version of a brain. They're called monster brains, what you're injecting in. A race version, which is they've got to get from point A to point B to point C. Whoever gets there first wins. Puzzle version is pretty much for human players only. It's going to be, it consists of tutorials as well as uh, other uh, like different ways of solving them. So it's a puzzle map. Um, you can also save maps, load maps, and delete maps. So if we go to say Spikeville here, which is another map, we'll load it. As you can see, it is a bunch of spikes. So let's go ahead and run that same set of monsters against these, this map and see what we get. So these spawn points are coming in and randomly putting them at different locations in the spawn. Every time they cross a, spa, uh, a uh, spike, they get hit for one point of damage. So as you see, they're, they're dying regularly. <laughs> and uh, that's how they go. So he's dead. He moves. Frankenstein moves. There's about uh, 60 different monsters in the game. Uh, right now there's like seven, but there's a total of 60 different characters in the game. They all have special abilities and uh, that they can use as well, which they'll spend energy for. There's also power-ups in the game where power-ups will appear on the screen and give you health, shielding, bombs, or what, certain other power-ups um, available to the players as well. Let's make Larry a little bit smarter than he is. Currently, he's pretty dumb by the fact that he just leaps off into outer space. Let's bring over the leaping Larry. But first, let's go ahead and uh, cancel it out. So, boop. All right. So, here's Leaping Lair. Here's how the brain works behind the situation. So, you have monster brains. You have an interface for I monster brain. It's a very simple interface. You're going to provide the player name, the preferred monster, and then this take action method. The take action method would be, is passing you a map, it's passing you your monster, and it's passing you the available actions for you at the time, which the monster knows that it, what his available actions are. Um, these are models, so therefore you can change them all day long. You're not, they're by value, you're not going to uh, alter anything. And as you can see, it's completely decoupled. There is no relationship to Unity Engine or Catacomb Crashers. It's completely standalone. So anything you do here is totally uh, unable to affect the game running in uh, Catacomb Crashers. So you're given your, it's, it asks you what your ag next action is, and then you tell it what it is. So let's look at Leaping Larry. Now we don't, you can inherit from Monster Brain Base, which we'll talk about, which is just simply a base class that has implemented those, that interface. And it's also added this movement offsets uh, method, which is telling, or um, variables, which is telling the Face, given the facing direction, which direction the monster is facing, will tell you what the next tile is. 
So that's all it's really doing right now. You don't really even need to implement Monster Brain Base. If you don't care, all you really care about is Monster iMonster Brain. You can implement it yourself. So the system's really loading iMonster Brains. It's not loading Monster Brain Bases. Okay, so let's go to Leaping Larry. Leaping Larry is, as you can see, what he's doing is he's taking this map class which, yeah, we might as well show you that too. So we have models. So the map contains tiles, which are all the tiles in the map. Features, which are like spike traps, uh, walls, or whatever, um, and monsters. So you'll get that with your list of map, and that's essentially your snapshot of the current state of the map. Um, as you can see, they all have even, so... There's coordinates of base map, feature is a name description, what type of feature it is, whether it damages you, whether it heals you, whether it's impassable or whatever is listed there, what its coordinate is, what other affected areas it affects, and uh, other various properties it may have. Um, a monster consists of its name, its who's the player, its coordinate, which way it faces, how many lives, health, and energy it has. So you're given this as every time it's asked for an action, you're given this, you're past this map, you're past who you are, and you're past this list of available actions. You provide your Larry, in this case your player name, and your preferred monster. Your preferred monster at this time is any of these guys here. So he's a demon, he's Larry, he likes to leap. Okay, so let's try to go with Larry a little bit now and uh, see if we can make him a little smarter. Because as you can see right now, he comes in, he's just getting the tile in front of him. He's going to default to whatever this guy's zero action is, which I think is usually forward. Um, he can leap in the case that the last action you've taken was forward, the next action can be a leap. If you, any other actions will not, will, uh, leap is unavailable. So he checks and he says, okay, can I take an action of leap? If I can, then I'm going to be leap. If not, I'm going to just go forward. So let's smarten that up a little bit. So we've got our target right here, which is our movement offset. Okay. So let's do, um, let's do var leap target, which is how far we can go. If we take this and go target dot should be coordinate. Yeah, it's just target. So target is a coordinate. So it's plus movement offsets again because you would jump two spaces. Okay. So that's it. He doesn't care. Our leap target will be two spaces away, meaning what is two spaces ahead of me? Is it a pit? Is it a tile? If it's a tile and it's and it's uh, then I'm I know I can jump there. Otherwise, I'm not going to even if I'm allowed to leap, I'm not going to leap because I don't want to jump off into the end of the world. So let's try that. We go leap target and. Then we need to find out the tiles located at that leap target. But let's do that later. So we've got leap target. We'll go ahead and keep that, move that down into. After we know we want to leap, let's move it down here. Let's put an else here. And let's look for this here. So there's our leap target. We know that we can leap. So we're going to fall into this bracket, right? This uh, clause right here. Okay, so now let's see if there's a tile at that position. So we're going to say, okay, so let's go var tile equals um, map dot tiles dot first or default. Let's do Q because I like Q. Q tile coordinate equals leap target okay so now we've got our tile we're saying okay our tile is here it's this leap target we're gonna say okay so if tile now we already know we've given ourselves leap 
So we don't really care if it does exist because we know we can leap there. So if tile not equal, or if tile still equals null, then we know we can't leap there. So we're not going to leap. Instead, we're going to just go, you know what? Change our actions to forward. Because we know we can't leap. Otherwise, we know we can leap and we'll fall out and leap. Okay? I'm not accommodating for uh, things you hit yet. So we'll worry about that when we cross it. So we're only going to go forward um, if we can if we find a tile in that direction that we can actually land on. Otherwise, we're not going to bother. I could get even smarter and say we're only going to go forward if, uh, if there's a tile directly in front of us. But for right now, I'm not going to bother with that. So, um, so else I'm going to go forward. Um, I actually think, let's go back. That if there is a tile, if there is no tile in that location, I'm going to back up. So in the case that I don't find a tile directly in front of where I'm going to leap, I'm going to back up and check it later and just keep doing that until I find a tile I can leap to. Now remember, back is going to make it so your next action is unleapable. It will not leap, um, but anyway. So here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, build that. So we just build it. Um, normally, now this will build the monster's DLL here. You as a, as a normal developer wouldn't have all of your classes in one DLL. You probably pretty much have one PVP class and two and another race class potentially. So you might have two classes in here, but no matter. Um, I'm just putting them all in here. So here you go, and uh, so let's, let's go ahead and delete this DLL out of here. And uh, then let's go back here to, we'll keep that so that I can copy it in. That's standard, there's monster brain and monsters. So let's take monsters and let's just copy it over. And that's all it takes. So you have your CC players folder and then your monsters are all in this folder, okay? Now, like I was saying, it's a, these are a class library, straight up easy class library. The only dependency it really has is monster brain. In this case, I'm, I'm using the project as a dependency, but most uh, player normal developers are just going to use it as an external DLL. So you would include it as an external DLL and you're good to go. So that's how it works. So anyway, we've got these in here. So let's go see what he does. Let's go back here. Let's go uh, Catacomb Crashers Repository. Let's run Catacomb Crashers EXE. Okay. So as you see, it ran. It's loaded. So let's see how he acts any differently. Let's load that same map. Push them. Load it. There it is. And let's go ahead and execute. Okay, so we're trying to look for Larry. He's right here. So let's see what he does when he gets close to the end or whatnot. See if he changes anything. So he's pushing them all off the edge. He should leap now. This should be a leap. And he did. Okay, so now I think he'll back. No, he won't leap. He should go forward. He did. Now he should back up. He did. There he goes. So he acts different based upon, and then he went forward and died anyway, because I don't have any logic in there for how he should act when there's nothing in front of him. So, but that did work, as you can see. You can also debug through it. Um, it does support the debugger. Um, because Visual Studio does, so you can attach to the process and debug through it. Um, so that's in case you have an issue. There's also, it's an easier way than actually doing it that way, and that is um, there's a notification that's added to every action. You can put in your notification to the action, 
and it will uh, show on the screen. So if you wrap this in a try catch or whatever, um, and you just and you find out there's a bug like a division by zero or whatever, you can send a notification back out with the in the catch, and uh, it will show that to the screen. So that's another way of, of debugging what's going on. Um, so as you can see, that's pretty much it in a nutshell and how this works. Um, it's all through dependency injection. The brains are injected at runtime. Um, they're pulled into the DLL via reflection or into the executable via reflection and they're called and stacked the way um, in turn as they go. So anyway, that's it for today. I hope that was helpful. And uh, well, what I really want to do is go forward with uh, maybe having streaming uh, tournaments. We could have tournaments where we're going through various, uh, you know, DLLs, different monsters, um, come out with the best uh, monster type would be great, like a, a winner. And then people could play against the winners and we'd have like a monthly tournament with like 64 monsters, eight sets of eight or whatever. Um, that would be pretty cool to do, I think. And uh, just over time, you know, see how that works out. And, uh, and as far as bringing in the player element to it, that would be next, uh, the single player mode. Um, this is also free to play for anybody who's a developer can get the system for free. Uh, if you want to play it, it'll be released on Steam for like a low amount, nothing, nothing major. Um, so developers can use it for free and players, I don't know, a few bucks um, will be able to play it and load. And then I will pull in full multiplayer after that, um, which is... Uh, would be the final part. So there's three different modes to playing it. So um, you can also build your own maps, distribute them. People will be able to play your maps. Um, new features will be included regularly, new tiles, new types, and everything else. So anyway, it's pretty far from here. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it's nowhere but up, and I think it'll be pretty good. So anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think, and uh, thank you very much.